It's amazing the scripture that says, but does not provide for his physical needs. What good is that? It's one thing giving seminars and courses and content and degrees and whatever, which is obviously fantastic. But providing for people's physical needs. I was hungry. I was thirsty. I was naked. It's so important. And job creation and starting businesses and creating jobs is vital. Today we are interviewing Brock. He owns a successful cleaning business that generates $500,000 a year. And today he's going to teach you how you can start your successful cleaning business. Follow me. Yeah, so at the age of 15, I started in the cleaning industry working for a friend's dad, cleaning apartment security hallways over the weekend. At the age of 16, he put me in a leadership role, being in charge of a crew of four. And then in 2013, when I was 19, I started Cell Sound Janitorial. From there, it was just growing and learning how to develop a business. Some of the troubles that we run into is operating a business, as well as winning bids, and then being able to successfully keep our clients happy. Wow, that is amazing at age 15. So did you not go to school or how did all this work out? So I worked a lot. I went to school, I worked over the weekends. I also had another job. So I spent a lot of time either at school or working. Wow, so hard work pays off is what you're saying. Most definitely. That is awesome. We are one of my accounts that is a church. I'm gonna show you guys the processes and systems we have in place to clean it efficiently. How many hours does it take to clean a place like this? So at this church, we've allocated five hours to clean. They do pay us monthly of a total of $778. And how many people does it take to clean a place like this? Generally, we have two people here, oh, just because there's so much vacuuming to do. It okay. makes it a little bit easier on the tax. When you first started your business, how much money did you make the first year? And now, how much are you making average on a monthly basis? Yeah, in the beginning, I mean, it was a rough start getting started. Uh, we made $16,000 the first year. Oh, man. Currently, we're doing anywhere from fifty five to 60000 a month. That's incredible. So after these years of hard work, it all pays off, right? Right. So what are your profit margins now? So just to kind of put it in perspective, our once a week accounts pay roughly uh, three ninety a month. This wow. allocates us three hours to get get to their account, service their account, and get back. So that's why it's very important to have systems and processes in place um, because if our techs are going over time, it does really affect our profit margins. When our techs do stay within the allocated time, we see profit margins anywhere from 20 to 25%. And how do you acquire new customers? So the most important thing is customer satisfaction because all of our clients are on a monthly billing cycle. So once we acquire the uh, client, it's just keeping them happy from there. And then once we get new clients, it's just adding on to the monthly revenue. Okay, that's awesome. Do you follow up with your customers and seeing if there could be possibly a referral? Yes, so we do actually have a referral program. Awesome. Um, we do, um, once a business refers another business, we do give discounts to our current client and then also we give a discount awesome. to our new client on their first invoice. That is awesome, you guys pick that up because anytime you're referring a customer, you're rewarding the original customer and saying, hey, thank you so much, correct? Right. How much does it take for you to start a business like this? And where did your money go? Yeah, in the beginning, I think it was roughly about thirteen to $1,500 it cost to get started. The money went to buying the equipment. The backpack vacuum was about $500 with the extension cord. Other things that it went to was the supplies needed, like Lysol, mop solution, things like that, as well as getting mops, towels, everything you need to clean a building. And then it also went to getting the license, insurance. Oh, that's not bad at all. I mean, anybody right now can just say, I can do this. I can put aside, what, three $400 and start this business today. Yeah, and get the All name right. started. All right, you guys, so we are now going to Brock's favorite supply store, which is Costco. All right, so we'll see you guys there. So tell me, since you've opened up, you've obviously acquired more tools. So what kind of tools do, would somebody be looking at and saying, I, I need to add this 
for your business to start? Well, to start, I mean, you know, you're gonna need your backpack vacuum, your extension cord, vacuum wand, mop bucket, mop sticks, mop heads, and towels. So what is this here? So this here is the mop solution we use. This is a rinse free floor cleaner. This gets used mainly in offices, general cleaning for the floors, things like that. Um, over here, you have your all-purpose cleaner degreaser, and it has a nice lavender scent. Oh, no. Nice. Um, Anything if, about scent. I know, right? And that's what everybody <laughs> likes. They like the scent. And the whole thing with our job is presentation. Yes, we're sanitizing. Yes, we're doing more underneath, but people don't see sanitizing. Yeah. They smell it. They see how their office is left. So I tell all of our techs, you know, it's all about presentation. Yeah. Pushing the chairs, the knots to the bag are in the back. They're out of view. You know, it's really the small things that add up to oh, that's cool. the big. All right, you guys. So we are launching the course to help you be successful in your own cleaning business. We have partnered up with a legend who has built his empire in just six years from zero to $1.5 million. So this course is gonna cover everything you absolutely need from obtaining your business license to setting up your website, from hiring employees and building a team dominating your area with the right marketing tools. There's gonna be systems to help you grow and scale your business, landing Airbnb clients. This is a step by step course, literally a blueprint to your business. How many employees do you currently have? We currently have 14 employees. I mean, with the accounts we have, it's a good number. We're definitely looking to hire more techs. That's awesome. So, what is a starting wage that you start paying somebody? Yeah, so we start our techs out at 17 an hour. That kind of gets them in the door, gets them training, gets them out to accounts. Once they can go and handle accounts by themselves, they bump up to 18. Okay. And then from there, that's really when we focus on the efficiency and being able to hit our time marks, getting the accounts done correctly. Once they're done with that, we bump them up to 19, and that's kind of where they ride out for the rest of the time. That's awesome. How much money are you spending in acquiring new clients on a monthly or weekly basis? Definitely an online presence is the key. Everybody goes to the web to search anything. And then also we use a lead generating service, which sends us leads. We do have to pay a fee per lead. Um, I would say on a monthly basis, we're spending anywhere from 500 to 750 Okay. On leads. Do you guys utilize social media and Instagram or Facebook? Um, we only have a Facebook page, and to be honest, we're not spending any money into Facebook. Okay, so no Facebook ads or anything no. like that. Okay. What are your cleaning services that you offer today, and what, which of them are the most popular? So we provide a wide range of cleaning services to our clients. We do carpet cleaning, pressure washing, window cleaning, floor care, which includes strip and wax, scrubbing floors. We like to say if it can be cleaned, we can clean it. Our most popular service that we provide to our clients is janitorial service. Wow, that's awesome. So pretty much anything that they request of cleaning, you get it done. For the most part, we will figure out how to do it or find someone that can do it for them. All right, so customers are reviewing making reviews online, Google, Yelp, Angie. Did you go back and read those reviews to see how you can improve or what did you do about those reviews? Uh, we always read the reviews. We did reply to all of them. We get most of our reviews on Google. We do have a page on Yelp as well as Angie Leads. Those are mainly the platforms that we do use to advertise our business. Okay, and now we're moving on to the fan blitz. How do you retain employees and keep them happy? Uh, definitely incentives and keeping a positive and fun work environment. Leonardo Usco asks, did Uniform improve your branding and business presence? Yes, it did. It definitely gives a more professional look. I know a lot of buildings we're going into at night when nobody's there, but when you're out and about in the public eye, I mean, it does add a good branding look. Okay, that, that is good. What is the biggest headache or downside to running a janitorial business by Nate M? being on call 24 seven. What are the most profitable job sites that you have? The job, or at least the type of cleaning that I found to be most profitable has been carpet cleaning, just because you charge per square foot. And then as long as you got the good process in doing it and you know how to clean the carpet efficiently, you can bust it out in a good amount of time. Nice, do you train all your employees to know how to carpet clean or is there a specific tech that you have? I've only have two other techs that are trained in carpet cleaning. Other than that, I'm usually out there with them cleaning the carpets. All right, you guys, so you just picked something up here. Listen to this, the most profitable job site is carpet cleaning. So that's one area where you can start off right now. Now let's talk about hiring. So before you hire an employee, you're obviously reviewing their applicants. How do you review their applications, especially when they tell you they'll be great fit for your company? Um, so we use a di few different platforms to kind of get applicants in the doors. We've used Facebook, we've used Craigslist. The main one we use is Indeed. 
from there, they just apply and we kind of read their resumes, see if they are a fit based on their job history, what they do, and get them in here, talk to them more, see what their values are and what they can contribute to our company and kind of where, where do they see themselves going and then we go from there. Okay, so during this COVID season, have you been doing Zoom interviews or do you still meet in person? We did a couple over Zoom, but it wasn't as personal as meeting them in person. Of course, that makes sense. When did you acquire your first client and, and how is cleaning this different from cleaning the house? Yeah, so we, uh, we signed our first janitorial client in 2015. And then janitorial is a lot different than house cleaning. One, you're dealing with businesses. So you got a more professional aspect and a more professional business dealing. Ultimately, you're in office buildings when nobody's there. Unlike house cleaning, you're usually there cleaning either while the resident's there or stuff like that. That makes sense. Okay, awesome. So if you went back knowing what you know now, how could our viewers say, I don't want, I don't, I don't want that two-year space? Fan. I want to start today. So what tips have you learned from that you can share with, with, with our viewers? Definitely online marketing. Having online presence is the best way to go right now. In the beginning, we didn't really have an online presence. I was just going business to business, trying to get what I could. In the beginning, I mean, we got a lot, we got a lot of no's. So, I mean, wow. don't be turned away or discouraged from all the no's. 100 no's, eventually they'll turn into a yes. Awesome. When you first started, how did you secure your customers? What did you do? What kind of jobs did you offer? And how do you maintain your customers? In the beginning, I mean, we tried to hustle and get any job we can get. It didn't matter what it was, what the price was. If we got a job, we were doing great. And the main thing we were doing was uh, move out cleans. So we'd go in and clean the houses after people moved out. We had uh, an agreement with a property management company. I okay. um, actually knew the owner and we were getting 10 to 12 houses a month. Wow. And we also listed on Craigslist, trying to get as many houses as we could as well. That's awesome. So how did the Craigslist work out for you? Um, we did get a few from Craigslist, but it wasn't the best. We definitely were better from getting it from the property management company. So currently we're no longer doing move out cleans. Oh, we nice. only provide janitorial service to commercial clients. Commercial clients, excellent. Yes. Well, on a weekly basis, how many customers are you servicing right now? On a weekly basis, we provide anywhere from 105 to 110 services. We currently have 52 janitorial accounts. That is awesome. So on a weekly basis, do you have a spreadsheet that you use uh, who, and are these services on a weekly basis or a monthly basis? Like how do you keep track of what services they need? All the accounts are different. We have accounts that we do every single day. We have accounts that we do twice a week. We have accounts that we do every other week. Um, we do it all based on a scheduling app called Swept. It keeps all of our accounts in line and it's a very easy system to use to add all of our text to it to get them scheduled. So you mentioned you work for a larger company. What what did you learn from them that you've now implemented in your own business? Yeah, no, it was a great time working for the larger uh, cleaning company. It did give me more experience cleaning carpets, stripping and waxing floors, being in a whole bunch of different environments. And then I just applied all that to my business. Okay, that's cool. So someone watching today and saying, I've never worked for a larger company, but I do want to open up my business. Is this something that they can just start today? Uh, maybe looking at some YouTube videos or what suggestions or advice would you give them? Yeah, most definitely. Anybody today can go and start their own cleaning business. As long as they can clean good, they can start their own cleaning business. We have viewers here that are sitting there and thinking, I want to start my janitorial business, but they have no idea who to reach out to, management companies. What are some techniques that you can share? Is this something they can write an email to or reach out to them, go meet them in person? What's the best thing that you have learned in your practice? In the beginning, there's multiple ways you can do it. You can go business to business, handing out business cards, flyers, doing cold calls, um, anything to really get your name out there. I mean, when you're first starting, you're starting from nothing. Okay. Nobody knows you, nobody knows really what you're doing and if you're going to be a reliable company. Okay. Then we started using a lead generation service known as Home Advisor, which they would send the leads to us. Um, we did have to pay for those on a regular basis. I, every lead that came to us, we did have to pay for. Okay. But we did get a lot of our work from there. Oh, nice. So this is something that, that they can just go online and just open up an account and the leads to it? Correct, so in the beginning you do have to pay like a membership fee. I think it's like 280 something dollars to be a part of it. And then they do send leads to you. It was like 40 to $75, just kind of depending on what the lead was and what it was gonna entail. Um, you do have to pay that price whether or not you win the bid. It's trial and error, hopefully your selling is on point and you can win bids.
Brock, what is your ultimate goal for your business? I mean, you're looking at this business and you're happy today, right? Correct. And you're thinking, you know what? In the next five, 10 years, this is what it's gonna look like. And what are you doing to achieve those goals? Yeah, our ultimate goal is to provide the best janitorial service in the South Sound. We're ultimately trying to achieve this by our systems, our processes, as well as training our techs in tasks that they complete. That's awesome. So how often do you train your techs? Every day. Every day. So you, every day you have a huddle or a meeting of some, some sort before they go out in the field? So a lot of it's hands-on. So while they're out in the field, I mean, every day is something new. The toilet's not going to look the same on the day-to-day -day basis. Okay. So every day is a training opportunity, whether it be from cleaning windows to vacuuming to cleaning toilets. Okay, okay. And how, how often do these big corporations, do they transition from one cleaning service to another? Most of the times when they're unhappy with their current janitorial company, they'll start searching for another one. Okay. So it's very important that you guys stay up on the quality of your work and the efficiency on how you get it done. So what entrepreneurial hacks over all these years that you have learned that, ha that is helping you succeed in your business today? Definitely to systematize and process everything within your business. That way, no matter who's doing it, it will always be done the right way. Are you constantly revamping your system or changing things? Every day. Every day. Every day. Does your team know about them? Yes. Every day? Every day. That is awesome. They get irritated sometimes, but we're just doing it to be better. Absolutely. Well, that's the only way to succeed, right? Right. So I'm sure you run into situations where you're like, oh man, I don't know what to do. So you have these questions. Where do you go to to get advice or suggestions? Google or YouTube. They are a huge help to how to clean things, proper way to clean things, things like that. I mean, you can find anything on Google. There's anything on YouTube. Okay. Have you ever made any mistakes where you regretted? Most definitely. But you learn from those, you grow, and you don't make them again. Going back, have you had a mentor who showed you all the steps? Um, and if so, do you think you need one? Or is this something that somebody can start today without one? Yeah, in the beginning, I mean, I had um, my friend's dad. He taught me a lot. I looked up to him as a mentor. From there, I mean, no, you really don't need a mentor. Google, the internet, it can teach you everything you need to know and how to do things. Ultimately, though, it does help to have a mentor. So you have someone one-on-one -on -one to talk to. Mm -hmm. They have their wisdom, their advice, what they've gone through and things like that. Corporations, they can sometimes just cut you off, right? Right. So well, has that happened to you before? Yes, it has. Oh man, that must be a bummer. So what have you guys done or how'd you learn? How'd you learn from that mistake and how do you, how do you teach your team? In the most cases, we lost our clients just due to poor service. Um, this was in the early stages of South Sound Janitorial. From there, we've learned how to develop our checklist better. Um, to be sure that we are providing the correct services and tasks to our clients, as well as our training platform that we've developed. We train our techs based on tasks. So we'll train them how to clean windows, how to clean toilets, how to clean restrooms, proper way to vacuum, proper way to mop. Um, once they have these techniques down, they're able to apply it at any account. Okay, so basically, so poor services meaning they're doing the job, but they're just not doing it to a professional standard. Correct, either that or we're just not doing tasks because we don't know or they're being missed. Okay, okay. Do sometimes these business owners comes out and they just do auditing on you guys or? Well, a lot of times when the clients come in from the weekend, you know, they get, they see their office, whether or not it was cleaned correctly, the trash was changed, is their toilet cleaned, things like that. Um, and a lot of times, you know, they don't let you know. Um, they'll just kind of move on to another cleaning company. All right, Brock, we love to end every interview with a, the last question is what book that you would recommend to our viewers that has been so impactful in your life? Uh, definitely the book is E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. Um, it's a good book on setting your business up with processes, systems, um, doing the beginning steps before you start your business. And I mean, if you've already started your business, read the book and start implementing those systems right away. That's awesome, I loved it. Thank you so much for your time. This was a definitely an honor. Show said, here's the secret, Mr. Rohn. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Once I got that, it turned my life around. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. He said, if you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. 
If you would have known me at age 25, you would have said, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. If you'd have known me, you'd have said that. I'm the guy, I don't mind coming a little bit early, staying a little bit late, I don't mind that. You'd have said, well, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. You say, well, how come he's got pennies in his pocket and nothing in the bank and behind on his promises? Well, I was a hard worker, but I was working hard on my job, not on my self. I'm telling you, if you'll learn that simple little principle and start the process today and start this whole process of personal development, work on yourself, make yourself more valuable to the marketplace, I'm telling you, you can so dynamically change your income and economics is the least of the values that you can start earning in terms of equity. If you'll start working harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work hard on yourself develop the skills. Work hard on yourself and develop the graces. All of the stuff necessary to become more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, your whole life can explode into change. Promotions, no problem. Becoming more valuable to the company, I'm telling you, no problem. Economics, no problem. Future, no problem. If you just go to work on the right thing, not get things out there to change. Don't try to change the seed. Don't change the soil and start working on the inside. Work on your philosophy, work on your attitude, work on your personality, work on your language, work on the gift of communication, work on all of your abilities. And if you'll start making those personal changes, I'm telling you, everything will change for you. Here's what he said to me. This changed my life. I got a chance to teach this in Moscow and across Russia. Three visits, now the fourth. Here's what Shof taught me. Profits are better than wages. Nobody taught me that in high school. Nobody taught me that. I went to one year of college. Nobody taught me. Profits are better than wages. Wages make you a living. Profits make you a fortune. And how could you work on both a living and a fortune? He said, well, you could start part-time working on your fortune while you're working full-time on your living. I thought, wow. Now he said, it's fun to get up in the morning, not just getting up, go to work to pay the rent. Here's what he said. Your income is directly related to your philosophy, not to the economy. I thought no one ever told me that. I kept hoping the economy would change. He said, no, your philosophy has to change. And he started giving me the disciplines and the process of learning the skills to change my life. This was an extraordinary man. Those were extraordinary times for me. Life changing in every manner that you can imagine, but very simple ABC concepts. Here's what I learned. Not to search for the exotic until you've discovered the basic. And those basic philosophies that he shared with me during that time were life changing. And then he added one more, which is so important, and it's probably worth the price of the seminar. Here it is. What you become is much more valuable than what you get. What you become is much more valuable than what you get. The major question to ask on the job is not what am I getting here. The major question to ask on the job is what am I becoming here? Not what am I getting, what am I becoming? So it's very important what you become. Remember, be a student, not a follower. And here's what you must always do. Design your own personal life. I'm very happy for people to take notes at my seminar, but I'm also just as happy if somebody says, hey, this is not for me, tear up all these notes and throw them away. That, that's just as valid for me, right? Remember, be no one's disciple. Chart your own course. Make what you do the product of your own conclusion. What I'm saying here is be your own person. You don't have to be a model of someone else. You don't have to do it like anybody else, right? Do it like yourself, right? It's your life, I'm telling you. And don't let anybody persuade you any different. Success is not a stereotype. Success is not a Ferrari. Success is not an automobile. It's not a house. It's not a place. It's not money in the bank. It's not a million dollars. That's not success. My name is Jennifer Prezioso, and we are at my butcher shop on Elizabeth Street in downtown Manhattan in Little Italy. It's uh, Albanese Meats and Poultry and I'm the butcher here and I run this shop which my family has had for almost a hundred years. If there's anyone that was going to do this, like it's me because I care about everything in here. What my grandfather did here and my great-grandmother did was really special. Like, people need to know about it.
At the store, I sell beef, I sell pork, veal, lamb, chicken. Then I have sausages. For the beef, I have ribeye, strip loin, filet, short ribs. Then we have like skirt steaks and other kinds of steaks. This is the ribeye, and it's coined the I gotcha steak. So my grandfather, um, he called it that because once you try it, he's got you as a customer. <laughs> You always make somebody try the steak if they don't know what to get. Well, my grandfather, how he used to say it to me, he would be like, what would you want off the steak? Well, what don't you like? So maybe I'd be like, oh, maybe I just want to trim it here. So it looks like a nice, even piece. So yeah, I just learned from him kind of how to trim it and go along with it. That's how you do the steak. <laughs> because there's an art to it, so it's you're like watching an artist at work. Cutting is almost, in a way, a bit meditative and it's really calming. It's like really peaceful to do it. And this store has tons of treasures that I've found over the years. These are my great-great-grandparents. I believe from their wedding in 1903. That's my great-grandma's family. And at this point, they've all become butchers. That's my great-grandmother. As you can see, she's cutting some boneless ribeye. My grandpa was never happy when people came to take photos of him, but sometimes like if they warmed up to him or bought meat, like he'd, you know, work with them. And a friend of mine drew that for my grandpa and like made the frame. Neighbor just gave me this photo she had taken of my grandfather probably about 15 years ago or so. This is a photo of the two of us that I really love. That's him cutting some lamb chops when they used to be cheaper. So I was born and grew up in Brooklyn, in the south part of Brooklyn, like Bensonhurst area. You know, a lot of the immigrants that came here and came to Elizabeth Street, they all eventually moved to other parts. And I was a really good student. I also really loved the arts and I got into that at a really young age. I would, was dancing and singing and acting and that was really much a part of my life and like my entire childhood into my adulthood. I very much was like a person that always had an interest in something and I just like went and did it. Whether the world wanted me to or not was like another thing. But acting stuck with me and I loved doing it. I loved performing. Then I went to college and that I got a bachelor in fine arts in acting and I went to London and studied there and then I had it in my head like I wanted to do Shakespeare and but then the world was like, ah, you're really good, like Marissa Tomei. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Growing up and other people are not doing what I'm doing. So it's hard to be so strong about having that, that vision of what you want. Uh, you know, it's not just about the meat, it's about like what community has been created here and this neighborhood. And you know, I used to complain all the time when I would hear about a store close that was here for a long time. And this was a moment that I said, wow, I really have the power to, <laughs> to save uh, what's left. And I think that's what makes it so interesting and worth me staying here is that no one can do what I'm doing right now. No one can be me. There is no obligation to keep this store going. I'm solely doing this for my own enjoyment to see it, to live a, a beautiful life. And that's kind of what I've learned through this process. I've learned now I just, I have to just do what my gut tells me to do. The world puts you in a place and then it gives you a choice of being like, you wanna do this or you could do this, but it would be really fun if you did this, right? That would make a good chapter in the book.